Excuse me, can you please leave now? Hello, can you hear me, Mr. Protagonist? With this, Jeff looks this way, crosses his legs diagonally, positions his head at an angle, and enters his own world. Amy, I am finally awake. I was wrong all along. I hurt you so many times. I made you cry. But I'm going to promise you that I will never hurt you again. I'm going to love you for the rest of my life. I cannot help but laugh out loud at these words. My husband and I have been married for 23 years. Our only daughter, Sarah, has just graduated from college, and she has started working. Now that we have come to an end of the path of raising our child, I believed that we were going to live a quiet life now as husband and wife. But it seems I was the only one who thought that way. After about six months after our daughter moved out, Jeff approaches me and asks me for a divorce. Hey, can I talk to you about something? Of course. What is it? Well, Sarah has started working, and I was thinking maybe it's time we both started a new phase in life too. Okay, like what? I want a divorce. Excuse me? I cannot hide my shock at this sudden request, and I stare at my husband. However, Jeff doesn't look at me at all, and he is gazing at the TV while talking to me. What do you mean? I mean exactly as I said. But why a divorce? Why so suddenly? It's not sudden. I've been thinking about it for a while. Well, that was just you. But since you mentioned it for the first time, it's very sudden for me. You can't believe you could just burst it out and that I would say yes, okay, straight away, could you? Jeff lets out a sigh. Actually, I am seeing someone. What? I see. So even a middle-aged man of fifty-five can fall in love. I have never considered having an affair. After I got married, I lost all interest in other men, and I have been faithful to Jeff. I start to feel sorry for myself. Jeff was facing a completely different direction. However, it is a truly strange feeling, and even though I just heard that he is seeing someone, I don't feel too shocked or hurt, and I am kind of accepting it. If this middle-aged man has found love, I should be happy for him. I honestly feel I don't want to get in his way, and that I can accept this divorce. Okay, do you love her? Yes. I see. What are you going to do once we get divorced? I want to marry her. Really? Okay, got it. Sure, let's get a divorce then. I am sorry. It's okay. I hope you spend the rest of your life happy. It's not that I don't like you anymore. It's just I can't picture a future with you any longer. Um. Okay. You're really trying to hurt me, aren't you? No, of course not. I don't want to hurt you. It's just. Okay, stop. It's fine. Let's leave it at that. I'm saying I'll accept the divorce, so there shouldn't be anything more to say. Oh, I'll be requesting a compensation, though. You take proper responsibility. As long as you do that, I don't have anything else to say. Okay, I'll pay the compensation, and I'm giving you this house too. Really? Thank you. You promise? Yes. It's the last thing I can do for you. Oh, here we go again. This promise is not going to be kept. I have hated this aspect of my husband for a long time. In so many situations, he would act as if he's a tragic hero. Even with this conversation, he's saying, "It's not that I dislike you," or, 
I don't want to hurt you. And he's trying to make sure that conversation doesn't end. I have accepted the divorce, so we should all be happy and move on. To add, Jeff has never kept a promise, so I'm sure he's going to say later that he won't pay the compensation or give me the house. We were together for more than 20 years, so I know everything about him. The next day, I go to receive the necessary divorce papers. That night, I tell this to my husband. I got the divorce papers. Huh. Already? Yeah. Well, we're both old and you don't have too long to live, so I thought it would be better to get this over and done with, so that you can be with the woman you're seeing. Yeah, but that was quick. Well, maybe. Um, could you change the names of the land and the house around her by the end of this week? And also wire the compensation too? Um, actually, can I think about this? Can you just hurry up and fill out these papers? It's not that easy. Yes, it is. Change the names for the land and the house, wire the compensation, and fill out the papers. That's all there is to it. That's not what I mean. Don't you have, like, feelings of sadness about leaving me? Will something change if I do? Well, no, but... Okay then, let's get this done with. Amy, don't you have feelings? I still like you, you know. Thanks, I like you too. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but... Okay, okay, just hurry up and sign this. Jeff is completely in his fairy tale land again. He thinks he's the hero. I'm not going to be his wife anymore. So there's no need for me to stick up to this any longer. I end our conversations as swiftly as possible and go to sleep. The next day, I reach out to my daughter, Sarah. When I tell her about the divorce, she is shocked. Are you really getting a divorce? Yeah, I don't want to be in the way of what he wants. I see. Is there really someone he's seeing? I think so. What are you going to do, mom? I don't think much will change apart from your dad not being my life anymore. He said he'd hand me the house too. Did you get a notarized document for that? Oh, do you think I should have? Yeah, he's not going to keep his word. Probably not, but I don't need a document. Why not? He's the man that I loved. Even if I know he's not going to keep his promise, I don't want to push him. I don't know why, it's just how I feel. Dad is so stupid. He's never going to be happy. I hope he goes to hell. Don't say that. The two of us are going to live happily and enjoy our lives. You don't have to hope he goes to hell. He will do if that's what's necessary for him. That's true. Sarah laughs and accepts our divorce. There's nothing I need to worry about anymore. However, two weeks later, I am about to find out some shocking news. I want you to meet my girlfriend tomorrow. What? Why? She says she wants me to introduce her. Um, well, I'm busy. Please. Okay, if we can do the afternoon. Thanks. I am honestly not too enthusiastic about this, but if things are going to move forward, I think it would be better to meet her. The next day after work, I head to the restaurant where we were supposed to meet. It seems Jeff and his girlfriend, Hannah, are already there, and they are sitting with their backs to me. Sorry to keep you waiting. I stand in front of them, see the girl's face, and I am startled. She is still a child. I am sorry, but exactly how old are you? Twenty. What? 
age difference doesn't matter. We were meant to be together. You understand, right, Amy? No, I don't understand. Disgusting. That is the first thought that comes to my mind. And I also think this man will not be able to live happily ever after. So, you're going to get divorced, right? Yes, if Jeff keeps his promise. Is that about the house and the compensation? Yes. Don't you think you're being a bit too greedy? What do you mean by that? If we can't have the house, where are we supposed to live? Um, why are you asking me? Isn't that something you too should discuss? Even after that, all Hannah talks about is money. Okay, there's no way Jeff is going to be happy with this girl. She only sees him as a walking wallet. I said I'd give you the house, but could you reconsider it? Huh? That's not what you promised me. Uh, I wanted to give it to you. I really did. I wanted to give you what you wanted as much as possible, but... Okay, okay. Let's put the house out for sale then, and we'll split the amount. How's that? Well, I don't know. Jeff is glancing at Hannah. Okay, let's do that. And also, don't request a compensation for me, please. Excuse me? Right now, I'm pregnant with Jeff's child. It's gonna be expensive raising a kid. What? Oh, really? Um, congratulations? I'm fine with that. I wasn't going to request you a compensation anyway. Hearing this, it seems she is relieved, and we decide to end our meeting. And once we are home, I can tell that Jeff still wants to continue the conversation, and he has a dazed expression on his face. I can never forgive you. With this, Jeff is in his fairy tale land again. I know. I am sorry I'm hurting you so much, but you know, I love her. What are you saying? Who are you saying you hurt? You, Amy. No, you know nothing. You don't understand anything. Yes, I do. It was insensitive of me to ask you to meet Hannah. I let out a deep sigh. Let me explain. The one you are hurting the most is Sarah. Why are we talking about Sarah? What? Can't you imagine how a young girl would feel if her father was going out with a girl younger than herself? She would be hurt, right? You really don't know anything, do you? Oh, I was hurting my own daughter too. I am so full of sins. With this, I snap. You just stop. You're so narcissistic, you know? Do you understand that you're actually just a greasy old man? It's hard to even look at you. You're already hurting your daughter enough by getting a divorce and dating a girl that's even younger than her? What are you thinking? It's disgusting. You really have no right to be a narcissist now. Take a good look at the mirror. Jeff is shaking. He seems to be trying not to cry, and he can't stop blinking. Just get everything done with and sign these papers. Now, right now. Okay. I get through the divorce process as quickly as possible. I am so disgusted by the fact that a 55-year-old middle-aged man is seeing a girl younger than his own daughter that I cannot bear to live with my husband any longer. Two weeks later, I checked that the compensation has been paid and we get a divorce. A month later, the house is sold. When I tell Sarah about Jeff's girlfriend, she is disgusted and she blocks him so he cannot reach out to her anymore. Sarah leaves her own apartment and is now living with me. I guess I will never see Jeff in his fairy tale land again. At least, 
That's what I thought. Six months later, on a day off when both Sarah and I are at home, Jeff and Hannah suddenly appear at the door. I don't want them to be shouting there in the entrance, so I reluctantly let them into the living room. What is this? What is what? Why are you living in a bigger and nicer place than us? Oh, well, we found a piece of land that worked well for my daughter and I, so we bought the land and built a new house. It's nice, isn't it? Where did you get all the money from? What do you mean, where? Did you get Jeff to pay more than the compensation? I can't help but laugh at Hannah's words. Why would you think Mom would do that? Mom paid for everything in full. No way! Calm down. It's not good for the baby if you get too excited. What's wrong? I'll listen. So tell me what's the matter. It's Jeff. He doesn't have any money. My daughter and I look at each other and burst out laughing. Oh yes, he's quite a spender, isn't he? He always spent all his salary. It was thanks to mom that we had a stable life, you know. Dad never got a promotion, but mom was general manager. What? Why didn't you tell me? Since when you were hiding this from me? Since when? Maybe about ten years ago. I wasn't hiding anything. It's just you were proud of yourself, and I thought you wouldn't be too happy if you found out. So I didn't tell you. No, it's not fair. Not fair? You should look up the word fair, young girl. This is the result of hard work. Jeff is the one who was still earning so little, but didn't care for all these years. Mum earns four times more than Dad. Oh, I can't be bothered anymore. Hannah suddenly seems like a different person, and everyone in the room turns silent. Okay, no more. You don't have any money, do you, old man? Goodbye then. What do you mean goodbye? You're pregnant with this baby, aren't you? Of course I'm not. I just wanted to rack up as much money as possible. You shouldn't lie about something like that. What? Why should you care? Anyway, I'm leaving. Hannah leaves, not giving a single glance at Jeff. Left there, Jeff seemed to have shrunk. I guess he can't look at me due to the embarrassment and shame. It's hilarious to look at. He should go too, you know. However, Jeff is as stiff as a rock. Excuse me. Please, can you leave now? As he does not move at all, I look into his face. No way. He's in a fairy tale land again. Excuse me. Can you please leave now? Hello. Can you hear me, Mr. Protagonist? With this, Jeff looks up, crosses his legs, tilts his head, and enters his own world. Amy, I am finally awake. I was wrong all along. I hurt you so many times. I made you cry, but I'm going to promise you that I'll never hurt you again. I am going to love you for the rest of my life. I cannot help but laugh out loud at these words. Sarah is staring at Jeff as though she is looking at a turd. Wait, wait a minute! I can't stand this any longer. I've put up with your fairy tale land for over twenty years, but no more. Jeff is dumbstruck. However, as I am laughing so hard, he seems to have thought he would be forgiven. He acts cool and shows a smile. What are you smiling about? Can you leave now? Huh? You and I, divorced, no longer family. Understand? Well, I thought you never wanted to break up with me, did you? Well, no. 
right? So I'm coming back to you. Um, no thanks. Why not? I can't stand you anymore. Since I found out you were seeing a girl younger than your daughter, it's a no for me. Now I hate you. So I want you out of here as soon as possible and never come back again. It's just I can't picture a future with you any longer. Huh? What do you think? Was I good? Sarah and I drag Jeff out of our house. Wait, please. He is still screaming something at the entrance. In our next life, when we are reborn, bang! I close the door on him before he can end the sentence. He was in his fairy tale land until the very end. I can't believe I put up with that for over twenty years. Good job, me. Jeff never came to our house again. He is working, so I guess he is living somehow. As for Hannah, I hear that she is using the same method to tear up other families and has to pay several compensations. I don't know what she is thinking, but she came to my house asking for help, which is how I found out about this. If we hadn't gone through this crazy divorce, would I still have been by Jeff's side? Sometimes, this goes through my mind. I spent over twenty years with him. I do hope we both find happiness down our separate paths. It's unbelievable to think he would go out with a girl younger than his own daughter. I wonder if Mr. Fairy Tale Land is going to continue living in a fairy tale. I'd love to see what he's doing ten years later. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video, and see you in the next one.